Okay, so if I'm doing this bear, I would start with very short lines in my hatching to show that this area has short hair on it. Now, I don't wanna switch different kinds of pens because different pens have different types of and colors of ink. So I do short lines here, right? And this is a situation where I am gonna outline. So I'm gonna box in this really dark area of this bear's nose. Okay, keeping in mind that this is in the middle of my drawing and I know that I'm going to not smear this around. Okay, so I'm gonna do short lines for the this area. And then as I work my way out, I'm gonna look at the shape and placement of the lines that I do need there. And I'm going to change the angle of my paper. Okay, so if I'm working my way out on the face, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look right here, there's longer lines. So there's short hairs here, longer, and then really long as we get out towards the shaggy areas of the body. And so you wanna pay attention to the direction the hair lays, right? And then you also wanna pay attention to the gradients and values that you find there, right? So this is kind of a darker pocket around the eyes to show some of the structure of the bear's skull. And so I'm gonna get over here and be like, that's a four, right? And so when I'm doing it over here, I'm gonna go back and forth comparing to make sure that I'm getting enough shading there to make that a four. And this eye is too far away and too big. So we'll just move it over here, make it a little smaller, a little more oval. Okay, so I'm going to get in there with that eye, leaving a little jiggity highlight, just the way it looks. My highlight got smaller than intended, but still fine. I also have a little bit of a shape here of like this line here and that line there. And so you wanna look at all those features as you're doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna come around and get those. Now, as I get further away from that area, what I'm gonna do is make the hairs longer. Now, if you want hair to look natural, you can't do straight lines of perfectly even hair. You gotta do just little variation so that it feels natural. So as I come here, I'm gonna start lengthening my lines, okay? And I don't wanna do it really suddenly because it'll look strange. And so we're gonna do slightly longer hairs as we work out towards the edge of the bear's face. And I have this light edge here that shows that that's where the edge of the face is. So when I get to those, I'm gonna put those lines fairly far apart. And then as I work my way back from there, I'm gonna get them closer together to develop more shading. And so the way we have our light and dark areas with pen techniques is by making sure that you are crowding the lines up closer together and overlapping more when you want them to be darker. Okay, so right now this is about the same value in this whole area. So I'm gonna look at it and say, I need to start getting more shading in here. So I'm gonna overlap some more lines and I'm gonna keep that light edge. Okay, so I'm overlapping those. And you can see how quickly it gets darker. And so I have to stop probably and check because I don't want that to get away from me. So that's not a four, that's a three. So I'm gonna check this. I'm gonna look at that and squint. And so some of this got a little too dark. That is more of a four. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I'm not getting too light. So you always wanna have your gradient checker with your value scale. Okay, now here's the thing. I have to keep this light area, right? So just like we did on the chicken, I'm gonna keep this edge looking light by darkening the area behind it. So I'm gonna come up here. And the other thing is I want that hair to have a little bit of a jagged edge to it, right? So if I was doing it with a line, I'd do it like that and make this part darker and keep those jagged edges. But I'm not just drawing an outline. I'm gonna do it with my shading to do that same effect. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to make sure that I'm getting this bottom corner 
for this bottom edge darker, but keeping a jagged edge so that my bear looks furry. So I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna do that. Now, if it doesn't have enough of a point, I'm gonna go back up into some of my other shading. And so I wanna make sure that I'm getting this dark line right here that's gonna fade into this area. Okay, and I wanna make sure that it's not too thick and that it fades as it comes up this way because that's what it does in the picture. And this is what you're gonna do with all fur edges where you have a light fur edge and then a darker area. And so once I darken those in, you can start seeing that this is gonna feel like it pushes forward in space and like it's closer to us. Okay, and as we get further out, once I get to this part of this, I'm gonna make quite a bit longer marks to make that hair look longer, okay? And so that's what we're gonna do as we keep going. Longer marks imply longer hair. So if I was doing a wolf, maybe my lines might be this long when you get to the fluffy part or like on a lion, the mane is gonna have even longer hairs than that, okay? So that's how we handle making light areas show without outlining. All right, next couple things that people are doing a lot of is um, fir trees, okay? So if I'm looking at my fir tree, I will have drawn in an outline shape, like if I'm looking at this grouping right here, an outline shape of these skinny fir trees that's doing like this, and there's a small one in the back. Now, fir trees, there's a bunch of different ways you can approach the texture. Like if you wanna do hatching, you might come in like this and be like starting to hatch in your dark areas. And so, you want to look for those dark areas and hatch them in. Okay, and then the spaces in between are going to be more wide open. Paying attention to the angle and shape, right? This is kind of a triangle shape that goes up. This one goes up and flattens. So I'm going to make sure that I have those really well developed. And you can see, it's harder to see your gradients when you have a color photo than a black and white one. So the dark areas are about a four, and the lighter areas are probably between a three and a two. And so I'm going to do the same thing over here, thinking about how I'm going to make those threes and twos with the outside edge shapes. And I'm probably going to have to exaggerate the values to get those to look right. Okay, so you could do it with hatching. You could do it also with stippling. I think stippling is easier to control so you can get those small areas a little bit better and have kind of a sense of like fluffy masses of leaf foliage. And so, and then right here, you can kind of see the implied trunk. So I might do like a line right there of stippling that's all kind of developed and then get some my dots around those. And we start getting a sense of the shape of that tree really easily. And then I'm gonna come back and crowd up some of my dark spots so that I feel like the trees got those clump sections of branches. Okay, and another one that people do a lot is smoke. Okay, so when you're drawing smoke, the, the one of the things you wanna look for is all these curving shapes. Now, the thing that's interesting is we see these curving shapes a lot of places in nature. So if you're drawing an ice cream cone, if you're doing a, a beach with a wave and there's the foam on the waves, if you're doing actual clouds, all of these things have really similar shapes. So you wanna make sure that you have carefully drawn, not fake clouds, but the actual shapes that you see, right? And that you are being accurate and not doing this right clouds are not shaped like that foam's not shaped like that 
And so we want to be accurate and detailed with our drawings so that we can start with something that's going to work. Okay, so the same thing that we're going to do here, I have this light area that I need to establish. So the way to make that light area show is by making the stuff behind it dark. So I'm going to stipple in my outside edge shapes. And then I'm going to darken behind the stippled lines that I made. And then fade those out as they move away from that light edge. Okay, and then once I've established the light edge, I can come in here and start managing some of these areas with some darker shading. And there's like this little shape in here. So we're also looking for not just exterior, but also interior shapes within the masses of things to draw. Okay. All right. Now, one more thing that I keep seeing a whole bunch of um, is skin tone. Like when you're doing people, I would definitely stipple them so that they don't look harsh. Okay. And so like, let's say I have a person's nose right here. Okay. So I have a nose that I'm going to be doing some stippling on and I have the tissue that's around it right and it's coming up here and we are going to have you know defined very lightly where we're going to put some light and dark areas with lines that we're going to erase so let's say I have an eye over here okay whatever you need to have going eyebrow whatever Okay, so um, I almost exclusively with marker shading do stippling on people's faces. So what I would do is I would come in and I would start with some of my darker areas and then work my way back into the lighter ones. And remember, you wanna be having your reference photos out, you wanna be creating gradients 